Hey guys, Langmare Systems Crossfire Pro. Let's try making a sign. This is the sign we're trying to make, or at least a uh, screen snap out of fire control. First thing we want to do is try doing a, uh, a dry run. I haven't got the screen capture running on this one, so we'll just uh, let you watch the uh, machine running here. But basically what we want to do whenever we're cutting something on this, in my mind at least, uh, we want to do a dry run, make sure that the uh, the sign is actually going to fit on the uh, on the piece. Uh, remember to zero all axes so that we don't go running away. And now we click start. It goes up to some random point. As I showed you in the picture, we've got a bunch of pine trees or spruce trees or whatever you want to call them up at the top of the sign. And uh, this is going to give this machine a pretty good workout. As you can see, it's kind of shaking around pretty good. Um, I don't know how well these are going to cut. They might be uh, just a ragged blob or they might turn out great. I'm, I don't know. The letters, everything looks like it uh, should cut out just fine. Let it run. That's the R that it just cut out there. Now we're coming down the A. I'm going to skip ahead here. You guys don't need to watch this thing run through the whole uh, series and we'll uh, we'll get it ready to cut. When the sign's cut out, it should be you know, approximately 25 inches long. Kind of an odd size, I know, but it was uh, necessary to do that just to get scaling right with the kerf width, etc. Uh, in the narrow slots in between the letters. Uh, pretty well, I had to zoom it out that far in order to get it to cut. We can turn off the dry run bit now. And I guess we're basically ready to roll here. Let's uh, cross our fingers. I'm far from an expert from this. This is actually the uh, the first sign I've tried cutting. So let's see what it does. See how big of a mess we can make. Well, that was interesting. We had an alarm on the screen. Let me uh, copy it. Error we got. We did not fire. The cause for this issue is the pierce delay in your program is too short. Okay. It did not fire. And pierce delay needs to be at least half a second. Most interesting. I think I've got the, uh, the pierce delay issue fixed. Essentially G-code is nothing but a text file. And what I did was I went in and edited the text file. There's a M... I forget what the M is. I'll put it on the screen. There's an M number that comes up that tells it, okay, this is your torch. Then there's a G4 space P and a number. If it's P1, it's pause for one second. If it's 0.2 like I had, then it's 0.2 of a second. And the alarm that we got said that we essentially need to have uh, 0.5 as a minimum. So now we are set. I've gone through, did a like, find and, and replace in uh, notepad and found every one of those pierce delays, bumped it up to 0.5 and then I turned around and uh, went through it three more times to make sure that I got it all. That looks like a good spot to zero. We'll zero all axes. We're basically ready to go. Let me grab the welding helmet and hopefully it's going to fire this time. Okay, let's click start and see what happens.
of the neat things about this program is that it is able to, when it halts for an issue like this, it's able to uh, go back and restart from uh, where you left off. It takes a little bit finagling, you gotta know which buttons to press. I had to try two or three times before I was able to uh, figure out where we start. But I think we're basically ready to give it a start here and it should cut the remainder. You know, we might have to restart this two or three times before we get it dialed in. Now one suggestion it made is that the uh, ground clamp might be too far away and it is attached to the piece, work piece, but it was down at the other end. So we'll move it a little bit closer and let's try again. Now we still have one little problem where we uh, lost our voltage in here. I don't know how well you guys can see that under the bar, but we've still got a little spot there that didn't cut. So what I'm going to try doing, I've, uh, I've reset or selected the line number that should start us down in around here and we'll recut that and then we'll stop. Hopefully it'll cut through this tab and then the rest of the sign should just pop right out of that piece of steel. We generate new G code from the spot where we are. And uh, we hit start. We got an error, but it looks like it cut. Why we're getting an error in that one little spot, I'm not entirely sure, but let us see what we end up with here. One little spiky right where we're having that issue. Take a pair of side cutters and we'll give it a nip. And that, I must say, is pretty much exactly what I was aiming for. That turned out beautiful. We've got the jagged trees up at the top. I think we're going to leave the, uh, the dross on there. It kind of emphasizes it, the burnt edge. And I'm very happy with that. We'll have to come up with some way of solidly mounting it. It's a little floppier than I was expecting it to be. Perhaps a uh, strip tack welded on that runs all the way across that has a, uh, an L angle on it for hanging. That would definitely stiffen, stiffen things up quite a bit. Anyways, that is what I wanted to accomplish. In the next little uh, clip on this, I will uh, try some different options for finishing. But for now, I think that is where we're going to end this. Thanks a lot for stopping by. If you want to see some more great content from Doug's Messy Garage, why don't you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon. Really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumb up, a like, and leave me a comment if you have any suggestions on how I should finish this. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you in the next mess.